there are a variety of considerations that you should take note of when using your Stripe Hog water blasting system. One of those is joint damage. The Stripe Hog is certainly capable of producing damage to joint material. Expansion joints are placed periodically in concrete surfaces to ensure that the material has enough room to expand and contract with temperature change. The joint sealant is typically placed there to keep water and salt and other contaminants away from the rebar or the structure so in freezing temperatures the water doesn't expand and crack the concrete out. So uh, doing damage to that material uh, leads to a necessity of repairing the material. In this particular picture, the contractor who produced this damage was back charged $60,000 to make the repairs to this bridge deck. So I'm pretty sure it's an issue that you should take note of. Now, depending on the age of the joints, depending on the composition of the joints, depending on the depth of the joint material placed in the joint, all of these are factors that can play a part in whether you can remove the marking from over top of the joint without damaging the joint. If your operator is well trained and certified in the operation of the Stripe Hog, uh, you should never damage a joint. Now occasionally, as you'll see here, you need to place rebar or some piece of metal as a protective mechanism over top of the joint until the truck passes over and then the helper can move to the next joint, place the rebar, and so on and so forth, move along the project in that fashion and thereby protecting that asset. There are times when joints run parallel to the path of travel of your water blaster. This may require some additional thought as to how you protect those if in fact they are negatively impacted through the process. Many times, the joint material is not adversely affected and really should be tested and paid attention to on a case-by-case -case basis. Many times, customers ask, will my Stripe Hog damage joints or will it not? And really, there's not a yes or no answer. The important thing is, is that on every job your operator does, he needs to pay attention his first pass over a joint. He should be paying attention to the condition of that joint and be very mindful if he's causing any impact to that joint, check with project engineer, check with the inspector, check with the owner and ensure that the level of impact to the joint is acceptable. If it's not, take remedial action and protect it with a rebar that we talked about earlier. We do sell those tools here. You can order one from customer service and uh, be shipped to you the very next day, or you can make one yourself. Now, you'll see in this picture, sometimes the joints run in parallel to the path of travel of your water blasting unit. In this case, you'll need to devise some other apparatus in order to protect that joint if in fact it's negatively impacted. In the case of removing light paint or removing rubber from runways, it's actually very rare that any negative impact to the joint will occur. Removing heavy thermoplastic markings from concrete surfaces can lead to frequent issues with joint repair. So be sure to protect the joints that your machine is running over top of. Failing to adequately protect these surfaces can lead to back charges from your customer. Neither one of us want that to occur. When having a conversation with your project owner or engineer, you should take into consideration what the life expectancy of that material was to begin with. For instance, if the life expectancy was 30 years and you're on its 25th year, anyone would expect that that material would be far more subject to damage. Consider the age of the material, but first and foremost, just do a test and if it creates negative impact, go ahead and protect it and keep yourself safe.